Okay, Justin Sullivan, new and army. Well, Hello, to Brixton. All right, thanks. Welcome to the electric, the old fridge for the old one. Before the fridge, fridge, it was the Ace. It was years ago. Like, we never years played the fridge. We played the Brixton Ace in 1983. Whoa, I think. All I remember is that I've, there weren't many people here, but afterwards, the support band were having massive scrap with each other out in the street out the back. That's what I remember about it. Okay, four members. It's nice actually. <laughs> it's a bit like a mini. We all walked to went, It's a mini a story. Mini, yeah. Oh, I'm stop crying. And well, I, you know, this area has gone, which is terribly, terribly sad. But this place looks like somewhere we might play quite often. I, I was going to say because you played um, the Manchester Ritzy, which has just had a big facelift. Yeah. As well, it's one of these sort of places. And um, how does it feel for you to be playing new venues instead of sort of like you know the established routes? Do, do you get a kick out of it, sort of like you know, sussing it out, trying new sound systems, seeing if there's any improvements? Uh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> there's improvements. <laughs> it's always, I'll tell you, it's always nice to play new venues, definitely. Yeah, that's really nice. And there are a few venues I love going back to, but not. But it's always nice to go to new places, always. Yeah. As for sound systems, the problem with venues is that they've got, is that some years ago, uh, in the new modern world, because of keeping things clean in the new spirit of anti-smoking and anti-dirt, and <laughs> things must be clean, and the, cor the new corporate, corporate world means that instead of everything being filled with carpets which are full of dog end burns and chewing gum, and old beer stains and stuff, and impossible to clean, but sound great. Mm. Everything is hard, so every venue they build now has got hard surfaces. Everything is hard because it's cheap to clean, yeah. which means it sounds really awful. <laughs> so actually, venues get sound worse and worse and worse right. because of that. Right. In the old days, where all venues were carpets, mm. and all sounded good. Yeah, it's all squelching around that's down right. front. Yeah, but now, now they don't sound bad. Although, well, actually, having done a sound check here, that sounds pretty good. Yeah, you're quite yeah. happy. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. Now, last time we spoke to you was um, on Today's a Day. That's Today's a Good Day album. Yes. Okay. Um, we spoke about the upcoming 30th anniversary at the time. And I remember asking you um, if you had any plans, and you said you, you were definitely going to mark it in some way. Now, you've got double it. albums, or you've got sort of, you know, some superb two set gigs. We did, the, the, I think the two things we did, one was the big box set thing, yeah. um, which was something to do with, uh, you know, doing a, a, a kind of a, a, a sort of best of DVD and best of CD, but mostly it was an American guy who's a designer who said, I want to do a book, a photograph book of you. And he collected all this information, photographs and stuff from 30 years and put it together. It must be weeks and weeks and weeks and months of work, all of which he did for love. And that was almost the main part of the box set to me. You know, it's a lovely box set. And then the double, the two shows, yeah, I think it was my idea. I was slightly surprised that the rest of the band agreed to it so fast, but they did. And we said we'd do four sh songs from each of the 13 albums, so minimum 52 songs over two nights. Well, usually we do about 60 different songs on mm. the Friday, Saturday night. And uh, we rehearsed for a couple of weeks because we had to learn quite a lot of back catalogue that this current band don't know. And I, like, I couldn't remember. I was going to say, it must be talking So we, yeah, we said a bit of rehearsal. Then we, when we told off to New York, and the first one was in New York, and uh, we were a bit nervous actually, but it went really well. And we were just like, yeah, that's great. And then we really enjoyed it. And the crowd were great, and then the next weekend was in Sao Paulo, in oh, Brazil, wow. which was fine. And then, um, and then we did it every weekend from September through to Christmas in some city in the world, um, which was great on paper, and I actually really enjoyed it. Good. But for people with families, this thing of going out every weekend, plus the travel days, so they'd be at home for like two and a half, three days a week and then going away again, and then going back, and then going away, and then everybody's families eventually says, that, look, just stay away, it'll be easier. I right. think it's pretty tough. <laughs> I mean, it was a tough sort of thing for people with families, like this a long weekend, every weekend, being mm. away, and then being at home for like two days in the middle of the week. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of the time I stayed out, and we had one, one uh, successive weekends in Istanbul, Athens, and Rome, so obviously I kind of stayed out in those rooms. Why not? Um, indeed. Now, so you've always been a songwriter who's always moved forward, you, you're always writing constantly, you're always recording new albums. How was it to actually take a look back in the past? Did you um, 
find some emotions that you weren't really expecting when you actually started stripping the songs down and jamming them with the guys that you said they hadn't done some of them before? Uh, putting the 30th anniversary, we, we had to do a, a, a CD, or we decided to do a CD, a double CD, 30 songs. Mm -hmm. And we tried to, we started off by trying to get a consensus. What's our best 30 songs? There is no consensus of any kind, like none. So then I just said to all the current members and past members of the band, name your favourite songs. Yeah. So they did, and made a very eclectic mixture. And then we had to put them in order. And I didn't want to do it chronologically, because I thought it would be really boring. So it was going to be 30 eclectic mixture of songs. And I, so I drove around listening to that, trying different orders for a while which meant that I ended up listening to this in 30 years' work, kind of. And I suppose at the end of, the, the end of it, I was kind of, I was just proud, I think. I was going to yeah, say, I was proud. proud. It it I just thought, what a very, very, I thought, what a very interesting band. <laughs> so, <laughs> and the guy that mastered it, so there's a guy that, um, that I, whose mastering work I love, we haven't actually used him as often as I'd like to, he's often not available, he's very expensive. But I, I asked for him to, to do this. And he mastered this. Um, he said any any band that can have Today is a Good Day on the same album as Marry the Sea has got to be worthy of notes, just because, you know, so much, mm. so much different kind of musical ground and political ground and lyrical ground. Um, I was just talking to the guy here who works at the Jules Holland Show and he says, have you never been on? I went, oh no, they've never asked us. Uh, kind of expect these days never to be asked because we're not the right kind of band. Yeah, so why not? A bit on a, uh, you know, and, I, and then I think, yeah, why not? I, th you know, we're one of the, I think it's a kind of received wisdom that we're... I think most people in the, in the media don't really know much about us. Mm. Um, and if they know anything, it's a kind of received wisdom that we're some kind of 80s relic. You know, I think any band like yourselves that have got a 30 year career and always done things on your own terms, they're not the sort of band that they're going to be able to say, well, no. you're going to do this, you're not going to upset any of our viewers. So. Yeah, we'll see. I don't, I don't worry about it. I'm generally proud of what we've done. And I think that we've... Uh, the other things that have attracted this very interesting... Uh, a following made up of very interesting people. Because they're all people that think outside the box. Because we don't belong to a genre. And we don't... We haven't got a political line. Okay, we do write quite a lot sort of political song, sort of, but there isn't a line. Mm. Um, so it tends to attract people that are kind of open to different ideas. Mm. Uh, a lot of really interesting people. And when you look back at those periods, you sort of... Like, We've done the looking back thing now. Ah, oh, so you, you, you want to move forward? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I, the 30th anniversary did involve a lot of looking back at something. Oh, no, it's just oh, I knew it was going to be my only opportunity to okay, talk about the old days. Go on. <laughs> I was just going to ask, sort of like the last question about the other stuff is sort of like, you know, when you listen to your, your lyrics and your arrangements in songs, yeah. obviously you're listening to the 18 year old angry yeah. yeah. come with something to say. Do you still feel that you've got a lot in common with that guy, or is he more now a, a fond memory of a, a, like a long lost family member? Yes, yeah, it's a bit like, I'll be honest, it's, it's, it's a bit like that. Really? Yeah. But I got to the age where I find really bad attitude with young people very endearing. Um, like, you know, when, when I meet young people with a very good attitude, positive, you know, I think there's something missing. Right. When I meet bad, young people with a kind of rather more anger that they can really handle and a certain amount of arrogance and say, oh, well, I quite like that really. Yeah, they still yeah, it's, it's, that's how it should be. You still know. Brings I forgive my younger self for being an arrogant shit, which I was. But uh, you're meant to be when you're that age. Mm, it goes a bit tough, really. Yeah, it yeah. does. It ought to, anyway. Yeah. This, this day and age, everybody's expected to be some kind of safe. Yeah. I think there's different times ahead.